If asked in interview, do you know how many types of compiler directives are there in Verilog? Do you know how many paired and unpaired compiler directives are there in Verilog? Do you know that you can define your own keywords using compiler directives in Verilog? Stay tuned till the end of the video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. Introduction. Next, we will list off uh, available compiler directives. Next, we will focus on the backtick include compiler directive. We will proceed our discussion with if def, if not def, else, else if, and end if. We will see various combinations for which all of these can be used. Next, we will talk about the backtick reset all directive that is used in conjunction with many of the available compiler directives and this one can reset many of the available compiler directives effects. Next, we will talk about a cell define and a end cell define directive. Next, we will talk about the default net type. This is a very important one because when you are writing a very log RTL code, by default, what type of net is selected, that is very important. So that is defined by the backtick default net. Next, we will talk about the pair of keywords, that is the begin and end keywords. Next, we'll talk about the pair of compiler directives, that is begin keywords and end keywords, which are used to declare user defined keywords. That means the keywords which are not in the Verilog library, rather with the keywords that are defined by you, that is the end user. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. The scope of compiler directive extends from the point where it is processed. That means you have multiple line of code and at some point you have defined the compiler directive. From then on, the effect of this directive is processed and across all file process. That means there are several files which may be included by a backtick include directive. All those files, when they are inflated, during the compilation and simulation that time this particular directive which is defined before it that will be also applicable for that particular code to the point where some other compiler directive supersedes or the processing completes that means up to the point where any other directive nullifies its effect next all verilog compiler directives are processed by the backtick character which has a ascii value of 60 and this backtick is very different from the apostrophe character which has a ascii value of 27 so that's the basic introduction for the compiler directives let's move on to the next slide list of available compiler directives. so here we will list out the available compiler directives that can be used in verilog available compiler directives in verilog are begin keywords, cell define, end cell define, default net type, define, undef, end keywords and this is paired with the, the begin keywords. This is paired and define and undef are also paired. Next we have noun connected drive, unconnected drive. and these two are also paired. Similarly the begin and end keywords are paired. These are the compiler directives that are available. Let us extend to some more list here. The list continues. If def else, else if, end if, if and if, include, line, pragma, reset all and time scale. Some of this today we will be discussing and we have already made a detailed episode on the backtick time scale because it is hugely used in Verilog design. The link of the video is given in the description. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Here in this slide we will talk about backtick include. The file inclusion that is the backtick include directive is used to insert the entire content of a source file into another file during compilation. This is very similar to the C language backtick include where you use the include directive to include the stdio.h. So it's very similar to the C. Advantages of it are helps to incorporate the benefit of a configuration management system that is CMS for code versions. We have different codes and that helps to maintain the backtick include. Now how this happens right? When you have your source code here, 
there is something that is included and time to time these things may have different versions again so if all these things are in repository when you are compiling your code right the right version or the latest version will be pulled from the repository so this backtick include helps you in that way helps a rtl designer to organize among various verilog source code files when you are writing the code, right, if you are using a bottom up approach, right, in a design, so you have first defined some blocks, right, and then you are designing a bigger block using those blocks. So these are kept in separate files and these will be included in your bigger Verilog code using the backtick include. So this way you can manage your code structure. Facilitating the eye on term maintenance of Verilog HDL source description and code reuse. The code reuse is a very important thing here because whenever you write a code, right, piece of code, you don't intend to write it again and again and again in different cases. So you write it, you keep it in a repository or a hard disk location from where you use a include directive to include this piece of code. Examples of backtick include are as follows. Backtick include, then parts, then count.v, then include file A, include file B. The file name here can be full path or a relative path. Relative means you have a dot dot then slash and then you have dot dot then slash and then you start with the path. So that means this is a relative path. So please watch our Linux series for the relative and absolute path. There I have created episodes where live demonstration of the accessing the Linux system is there. There you can get familiar with such relative and absolute paths. Link of the Linux tutorial series is given in this video description. Here we are done with the include directive. Let's move on to the next slide. If def, here in this slide we will talk about if def, if not def, else, else if and end if. Now all these things are here and various combinations of them can be used. Here we will have a general idea in this slide. These conditional compiler directives abbreviated as CCD are included optionally in a Verilog HDL code. Situation where the if def, else, else if, end if, and if and if compiler directive may be useful, including the following selecting different representation of a module such as behavioral, structural, or switch level, choosing among different timing or structural information, selecting different stimulus for a given run, nesting of if def, if and def, else, else if, end if compiler directive shall not be permitted. Now the cases where it can be used like we have talked about these things where we have multiple choice of direction that means we have multiple roads to go ahead. So there we apply the condition using all these compiler directives that is the conditional compiler directives called CCDs. So here we are done with our introductory slide from next slide we will see the combinations in which all these five can be used. Here in this slide, we will talk about if def, else, and end if usage. The if def compiler directive checks for the definition of a text macro name. So, generally, text macro, if you are familiar with C language, you already know about the text macro. If the text macro name is defined, then the lines following the if def directive are included. If the text macro name is not defined and else directive exists, then this source is compiled. So this way the if def, else and end if, these things can be used. Here there is a pair you can see, right? If def and end if. So these are paired. So it starts the condition and, and this ends the block. And in between we have else. The end if compiler directive ends with the if dev block, which I have just mentioned. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Here in this slide, we will talk about if and if, else, end if, how these are used. The if and if compiler directive checks for a definition of a text macro. It's similar. If the text macro name is not defined earlier for if def it was defined that true condition was checking here we are checking about the false condition if not defined then the lines following the if and def directives are included. The text macro name is defined then and an else directive exists then this source is compiled. Basically if not defined it goes to the first block with the if and def and if the text macro name is defined means the opposite the code for the else block will be compiled. So this is the way it works. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. The end if compiler directive ends the if and def block. As I have mentioned this is the starting and this is the ending. So these two are paired and in between the else exists. 
analysis. It is similar as the previous slide which I have talked about. Here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Here in this slide we will talk about if diff, else if, end if. How these things are used. The else if directive exists, the compiler checks for the definition of the text macro name. If the name exists, the lines following the else if directive are included. The else if directive is equivalent to having an else block and within we have a nested if diff and an end if. So this is equivalent. The entire thing is get replaced by the else if block. This directive does not need a corresponding end if direct because the if diff that will have its paired. So these do not need another end if. This and these are paired. So these two will complete the block and the else if will reside in between. The first what happens the if diff condition is checked. If it is not fulfilled then it goes to the else if condition and there all of this thing happens and then the entire block is ended by the end if condition. This directive shall be preceded by an if def or if and def directive. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Define and undef. So here we will talk about two different things that is define and undef. And just a reminder, we have come across the conditional compiler directives that is CCDs. And previous slide was for them. And here on we are talking about very, very different things. And we start with the define and the undef. In the situation where a constant number is repeatedly used throughout a description, a text macro should be used in that case. If the value of the constant needed to be changed, only the source description need to be altered. The directive undef undefined previously defined text macro. That means the undef reverses the action of the define. The text macro facility is not impacted by the compiler directive reset all. The text macro names cannot be same as the compiler directive keywords. This is another very important point. First, if we write a text macro as keyword, the compiler will be get confused and it will throw an error. So this point has to be noted. Our text macro name cannot be same as any of the compiler directive keywords. Redefinition of text macros is allowed. That means once you define something with the define, at some later point, you can again use a define to redefine it. The latest definition will be retained by the compiler. That is the provision that our Virula compilers have. Example, back to define, word size 8. Then we have range 1 down to word size data. Next, we have define max and then we have this text macro defined here. You can see it's a conditional block, right? Or you can say it's an inline function type thing. And then we use it like this. And later, we can have this also. This exemplifies the define. And let me hear what happens. This text macro is mapped with 8 and hence in the compilation time, this is put here and expanded. And we define max as this, right? A and B. And here when we are writing the code, right? All this, it will be expanded as. So this way the expansion takes place using a text macro. So I have exemplified with different example. Hope you have understood. And anything you have defined using the backtick defined can be undefined using the backtick undef. That means if you write undef word size 8, so this thing will be removed or you can say this is undefined. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Reset all. So here in this slide, we will talk about reset all. Here we start with when a reset all compiler directive is encountered during the compilation all the compiler directives are set to default values that means this directive the reset all resets all the previously defined compiler directive this is useful for ensuring that only directives that are desired in a compiling particular source code file are active the best practice for an RTL designer is to use the backtick reset all at the beginning of each Verilog source code and before any other compiler directives are used. This means when you are writing a code, piece of code, at the very beginning, if you write the reset all, right? By mistake, if any other code has something macro or something is defined and which you are reusing here in this code, it resets any previously defined things that are there. Although generally we have the undef, I've just given example just for your understand however going throughout this video we will come to know which things are getting resetted by reset all and which compiler directives are not 
it is illegal for reset all directive to be specified within a module or a user defined protocol so you cannot use it inside a module or udp that you cannot do we have talked about module and udp in the very beginning episodes of this series so in case you have not watched please go ahead and watch them here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next here in this slide we will talk about the cell defined and end cell defined the directive cell define and end cell define tag modules as cell modules that means if you return a module in case you would have to define it as a cell these two pairings have to be done at the beginning and the end that will define it as a cell it is advisable to pair each cell defined with an end cell defined but is not required it is advisable that you keep a practice of writing the cell defined with a paired end cell defined these directives may appear anywhere in the source description but it is recommended that the directives be specified outside the module definition more than one of these pairs may appear in a single source description. the latest occurrence of these directives in the source control whether the modules are tagged as cell modules the reset all directive includes the effects of a end cell defined so here you come to know that if we use the reset all that does the purpose of the end cell defined so previously we have talked about the reset all right so as i mentioned we will come across the instances where the reset all can act so here is one example that reset all can act here in cell define if you are using so here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide default net type the directive default net type controls the type of net that are created for implicit net declarations. The possible net types are where try, try0, try1, want, try and, wor, or try or, try reg, uware, and none. Default net type will set your default net type in your Verilog code. And the possibilities of the list is mentioned here. Next, it can be used only outside of the module definitions. Multiple default net type directives are allowed. The latest occurrence of this directive is the one which controls the type of implicit net. So that means you have written the different default net type statements, and the last one will be active, and before the uh, and the previous ones will be and the previous ones will be inactive by the compiler. When no default net type is specified or reset all is specified, implicit nets are of type where. So that means in case you are not using this or using this, what happened that the default net type is where. So here we are done with the default net type and now let's move on to the next slide. Begin keywords and end keywords. Here let's start. The pair of begin keywords and end keywords are used to specify custom or user defined keywords within a block of source. These names are very much uh, self explanatory begin keywords and end keywords. That means you are defining a keyword. And these keyword names should not be your predefined or the library keywords from the Verilog. This should be different. Otherwise, the compiler throws an error and it stops. The directives do not affect semantics, tokens, and other aspects of the Verilog language. The begin keywords and end keywords directives are allowed to operate only outside design element like module, primitive or config. So that means these two has to be used outside any module definition. The begin keyword directive impacts all included source code across main source code boundaries until matching end keyword directive is encountered. That means anything between these two will be considered as the keywords that is the user defined keywords. Each begin keyword directive must be paired with an end keyword directive. This pairing has to be done by you. So you must keep a convention of writing the begin keyword and end keywords in pair. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.